And now to this week's Torah portion. What can it teach us about heroism as we acknowledge the heroes who are in our midst tonight, both in body and certainly in our hearts, as we know many are watching and live in faraway places, but their relatives are here tonight. This week's parsha is called Chaye Sarah, Sarah's life, and it begins, ironically, with her death. The rabbis ask the question, why is Sarah's death the narrative that immediately follows that of the Akedah, the binding of Isaac? The answer that's offered by our Midrash is that this famous episode of the binding of Isaac that we read every Rosh Hashanah and that we read last week in our Torah portion, this horrific moment, is in such proximity to the narrative of Sarah's death because it is actually the cause of her death. How does the binding of Isaac cause Sarah's death, according to the Midrash? We might infer that it is because her heart breaks when she learns what her husband almost did to her son. And perhaps this is part of it, and there's certainly a strong Midrashic tradition that explores that. But one of my favorite Torah scholars, Aviva Zornberg, draws a, draws a slightly more nuanced idea out of our Midrashic tradition, which is this, and it's more general, it applies to all of us. When Sarah learns what has taken place on Mount Moriah, that Abraham had the knife in his hand and was about to use it, but that a heavenly voice stopped him at just the right time, she realizes the true precariousness of life. She understands the truth that small things Seconds, whims, impulses, chance often separate life and death. She learns what we might learn when we nearly have a terrible car accident, but don't, just because we slam on the brakes at the right second and not a breath later, or someone else does. This interpretation that Sarah is overwhelmed by her understanding of how vulnerable she is, her son is, we are, and so she cannot summon the strength to go on living, declares that she cries out like a desperate sound of a shofar, and then she dies upon learning this news. What this all-too-human element of our famous narrative reminds us is that facing the fact of life's fragility its truly and terrifyingly tenuous nature is a difficult thing to do while maintaining our center as human beings. Our tradition acknowledges how difficult this is at every turn. For example, there will be a wedding here on Sunday evening, a wonderful event. And we know that at a Jewish wedding, a glass is broken. What does this footstep mean? It is a symbol of that couple's resolve to accept life's precariousness and to love deeply and freely anyway. But that is so much easier said than done, so much easier to step on a glass than it is to live that conviction. Often, when we are reminded of the way that things can change without even a moment's notice, we either close our eyes to that fact, refusing to admit that the glass even exists, or we let the fact of the glass's fragility crush our spirit, as the Midrash suggests that Sarah does. But some among us let the fragility of life be a motivating force. Some among us use the fact of the glass to help them find their inner hero. Some among us actually do shatter the glass with their lives, putting their foot down, standing tall, and loving deeply and bravely anyway. And it is some of those individuals that we honor here tonight. If we accept that we are vulnerable as people and that we need to be defended, then we know that we owe our lives and our liberty to those who have stood up and said, he nanny, I will be that defender. Rather than letting the fragility of life cripple them, they have let it strengthen them. 
And in this, they teach a lesson to each of us about how we can fight our own personal battles in our lives and beyond. Crushing the glass, standing tall against life's vulnerabilities and letting that experience animate one's choices is an incredible gift to humanity. And our country owes a true and unfathomable debt of gratitude to all those who have served in our armed forces, who have been willing to live and die for a cause, for a future that they may never see. These are the heroes we honor tonight, and it is such an honor to recognize them tonight on this eve of Veterans Day. So I would like to ask that if you have served our country in its armed forces, would you please rise? If you are a family member of someone who has served our country and its armed forces who could not be here tonight, but you'd like to represent them at this moment, please rise as well. With these heroes who are standing in our midst, each of whom has said hineni, themselves, their families, to stand for all of us and to remind us that we can tap into that inner hero as well. I would invite the entire congregation to read together, while you all remain standing, please, a prayer for our veterans. And we devote this moment to each person who has risen here tonight. Compassionate God, source of mercy, we pay tribute to those who have served our country to express our gratitude for their courage and selflessness, both those among us today and those of generations past. May we never let down those who have served in defense of this country. May we uphold the values of freedom, the inherent dignity of every human being by our own right conduct, by the kindness and tolerance we show to one another. May we lead the world by example and become, in the words of Isaiah, a light to the nations. Then will the labors and sacrifices of these veterans be honored, not in words alone, but by our deeds. May each hero in our midst today, along with their loved ones, continue to be an inspiration to us. May their legacy be their living reminder that we are greater than the sum of our parts, that we are stronger than our fear, that we hold within our hearts boundless love and love. May God bless our veterans with health and joy and honor and a sense of pride for what their sacrifice has meant to their fellow Americans. Amen. And if you would remain standing for one more moment as I offer you our priestly blessing. The words of this blessing declare that we are not all powerful. None of us is. But at the same time, we do have power within us, and we share that power with each of you, for you have shared yours with us. May God bless each of you and keep you safe and secure as you progress through your life from this day forth. Ya era donai pana velecha vihuneka. May God be gracious to you, and may God protect you, and make the way smooth for you. Isa donai, Isa donai, panav elecha. V'yasem lecha, v'yasem lecha, v'yasem lecha, shalom, shalom. May you feel and see God's face shining throughout your life. And may God grant you the gift that we all wish for you and the gift you have given us, the gift of wholeness and completeness and security and peace. Amen.
You may be seated. Our debt to you and all whom you represent is beyond measure, so please know that all who are gathered here tonight are honored to be standing on your shoulders. This moment of song, therefore, is dedicated to you. This is going to take a second. In the garden there's a tree planted by someone only imagine me what love what vision I marveled at the gift no fruit could be sweeter than this As my people went from land to land Something passed from hand to hand Isn't it just the words and stories The ancient law It's the way we study the way. I'm standing on the shoulders of the ones who came before me. I'm standing on the shoulders of the ones who came before me. My life is full of choice Because a young man raised his voice Because a young girl took a chance I am freedom's inheritance Years ago, they crossed the sea, and they made a life that's come to me. I'm standing on the shoulders of the ones who came before. 